Sunday afternoon, January 23rd, I think. Um, I wanted to make a video about how I put together nesting box herbs for my chickens. Um, a lot of people buy the pre-made kind and that's great. They're really great. They smell fantastic and I have certainly bought my fair share. But I wanted to create my own mixture um, based on what it seems like um, my girls really like. You know, they don't try to, they don't lay other places when I've put nesting box herbs into their box. Okay. Um, sometimes some combinations of herbs or, you know, scents, um, not all chickens like, and they'll avoid that. And so you kind of have to, um, kind of experiment a little bit if you're going to make your own nesting box herbs. But for the most part, the chickens just like the extra, the nice smell, uh, encourages them to want to lay in that nesting box. And all of the herbs that I put in my mixture have a benefit to them. Okay, I'm going to try to stop bumping this table because it's making the camera jiggle. But um, different herbs have different health properties. You can look up the individual herbs and see what all the different benefits are. Some of them are high in vitamin C. Some um, have um, antibiotic properties. Some of them are uh, great for repelling pests. Some um, are really good for their respiratory system. There's just a whole variety of what each individual herb has for benefits and then as a combination how they work really well but the main reason I use them is um, I like my nesting boxes to smell nice and to feel like a nice environment for my chickens um, I like the idea that it's good for their health especially if they pick them and eat them uh, they get vitamin C among other things from these herbs and I like that they repel any pests any mites or lice or anything like that and so there's really good reasons for using them. You don't have to use herbs in your nesting boxes. You absolutely don't have to. But if you want to, then there's really no science to it. You just mix up what you like and in whatever combinations you like. Some of my herbs are in powder form and some are in leaf form. Um, but these are things that I put in. I usually start with rose hips because I like rose hips. And rose hips are heavy with vitamin C. But, you know, I'll, I get these from the local Asian market. They cost me like $2 for a bag full. If you were to go to a health food store, they could cost four times that. And online, they could cost four times that, like $8 for a bag this big, maybe even not even this big. But check out your local Asian markets for herbs and for spices because they're a lot cheaper there and you can get them in bulk rose hips. Make sure I get every last one in there. I picked up some jasmine. I don't put much in there, but I do put some jasmine in there. Maybe a couple tablespoons. That was probably a cup or so, maybe two cups. That's probably closer to two cups of rose hips. Um, and I've got some organic um, licorice root. I'll put a few tablespoons of that in and no I do not measure it so it's just sort of you know about that much and my grandmother never used to measure anything either she used to say I would put a hand tablespoon of that in or a hand teaspoon but amazingly I've done the measurements I've watched her measure things and then I measured it in actual me in uh, measuring spoons and it's really pretty accurate so there you have it um this is the organic echinacea we all know how beneficial echinacea is for us i put a good a couple tablespoons of that in there lavender lavender has so many good health properties but my favorite thing about it is that it smells so nice and i put a good quarter cup of the lavender in there And then I've got lemongrass, and again, probably a few tablespoons of lemongrass is really all you need. Uh, 
and eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is really good for the respiratory system and it smells really good. So I've got another couple tablespoons of the eucalyptus. And then I've got my powdered herbs. I have my olive leaf powder and all of these herbs are organic. And I put a couple tablespoons of that, maybe a tablespoon and a half. And then my wormwood. And I'm really hoping to grow a lot of this myself. And the wormwood again, a couple tablespoons. I would like to be able to grow and dry my own. I don't have most of these, so I'm gonna have to find a way to either grow them or something. And then last but not least, calendula. It's basically marigold. And chickens will eat marigolds if you just throw them out to them, they'll eat them. They're good for them. Lots and lots of vitamins. Yeah, put a good quarter cup to half a cup of the marigold in there. And calendula. And then just give it a good mix. And this is what it looks like, really unmixed. And then you just, you know, mix it up with your hand. And yes, it is gonna put up a amount of, two amount of dust. But then, that amount right there, I'll be able to just sprinkle a little bit, maybe a handful around in their nesting boxes. Um, that'll get me through two, Freshens and I freshen my nesting boxes about once a week So you know, it's not like I'm doing this every day, so it's not horribly expensive I Get in there and break up some of those rose hips And that really gives it such an amazing aroma. I love how it smells And they will pick at it they will eat it They'll scratch it around inside the nesting box. That's what you want them to do. All of my herbs are organic. I get them from a health food store or from the Asian market. With the Asian market, you need to be a little more careful to read the packaging because they'll tell you if it's been chemically treated or sprayed. And I don't give my chickens anything chemical at all. So there you have it, nesting box herbs. All set for tomorrow. And I mix this up in their water bucket. And you know, this is how I refill their water was with this bucket. I just leave the residue in there and that puts it in their water too. So, win-win. So, um, if you have any questions about um, nesting boxes, nesting box herbs, um, how to have nice, clean, healthy um, nesting boxes for your girls, shoot me a comment or a question. I'll be happy to answer it. I'm not an expert. I've been doing this for about eight years now, and I've learned a lot from a lot of people. I really trust a lot of the um, good, strong, organic um, chicken raisers and gardeners. So um, the advice that I'm giving you is advice that I have gotten, and I've compiled it you know, from many different sources, and I've tested it, and it works. My chickens are extremely healthy and very happy and their chicken coop smells nice. And if it doesn't smell aromatic like herbs, um, it just doesn't have a smell, which is what you're shooting for. You don't want your chicken coop to smell bad. If it does, then you have a problem that you need to deal with. There's always going to be a little bit of an odor in there because you have livestock in there. But for the most part, it should smell nice. It should smell fresh. You should not be at all concerned about your chickens being in there. So if you have any questions about that too, I've made some videos. You can check out my videos on how I keep my chicken coop clean and healthy, what bedding I use, things like that. Um, I've got one whole one that I did about preparing your chicken coop for winter. And that includes some of those suggestions. But I'm going to go over getting your chicken coop ready for spring and summer once spring comes, which it hasn't yet. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, have a great day and 